Thank you for joining Pastor Curtis and Joy for this message. If you would like to hear more from Pastor Curtis or Joy, please check them out on their Coker Ministries YouTube channel. Also, please like and subscribe if these messages are a blessing to you. You can also visit their webpage at cokerministries.com. God bless you. Have a great day. This ministry functions on the support of our listeners. We appreciate your prayers and your financial blessings. Your support helps us to continue to share the message of grace, peace, Christ righteousness, and the finished work of the cross. You can give online or digitally at the Cash app. The name is Coker Ministry or Joy Coker. Also at Venmo at Joy Coker. Or you could mail your support or prayer request to Coker Ministries, 15239 555th Avenue, Parker's Prairie, Minnesota, 56361. We pray God's blessings over you. Remember, if you are in Christ, you are blessed, highly favored, and so very deeply loved. Again, thank you for joining us in the Word. Be blessed. As our ears, you circumcise our heart. You help us repent. You help us change the way we think to line up with your counsel, with your wisdom and your logic that we call your Word. Holy Spirit, be our teacher, be our guide. Comfort us as we pluck out the stuff that we shouldn't be thinking about. May we begin to see your word as, as you want us to see it. May we understand the ministry of Jesus in the order of Melchizedek. This we pray in Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen. Amen, amen and Amen. I tell you what, that right there, uh, understanding, you know, you have to reprogram backwards. I was going back and just reading some of the things that Jesus had said and taught, understanding what had been taught in the book of Hebrews that Jesus was a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek, an order that they were, the Jews were fully aware of. It was mentioned in the Psalms. It was mentioned all the way back in the book of Genesis, chapter 14. So they were fully aware of that there was an order of Levi and that there had once been an order of Melchizedek, uh, which had been set aside for a period of time. But uh, they were fully aware of that. And so I started going back looking at some of the, uh, some of the things that Jesus had said and, and <clears throat> especially about the end times, about his kingdom. And I, st I just started unplugging the thoughts I had of anything looking like. Now, it may look someone like, you know, the order of Levi and the way things were then could have been a shadow or a type of the Melchizedekian priesthood, but it wasn't like that. It, was, it could have been a shadow, a type of it. Uh, let, let me just read a scripture here to you. This really isn't what we're talking about tonight, but I, I just got a, I ran across it. it. Huh? Or maybe it is. Or maybe it is. You never know. It's not one of our chapters, but it, may, it should be in there. This is in Acts chapter 15. Matter of fact, we were going to talk about this at the end of if we're, we're going to talk about Romans 8, 1 and 2, mainly tonight. But uh, there's another section coming. We're talking about Acts chapter 15 and Acts chapter 21, where it's a plain and simple, hey, the Gentiles don't have to follow the law of Moses. Does everybody understand what those two chapters are about? Maybe I should start with that. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and I'll say this out loud, and we'll remember it next time we talk about it. But but it's just, I, you know, when you read stuff, you read it, but sometimes it doesn't jump out at you. Well, this time it jumped out at me. Look at verse, uh, <clears throat> verse 19. Therefore, I judge that we should not trouble those from among the Gentiles who are turning to God, but that we write to them to abstain from things polluted uh, by idols, from sexual immorality, from things strangled, and from uh, 
and from blood. And if you know anything, this is, this is really talking about uh, the Noahide laws uh, that were long before the Levitical priesthood and the Moses and all the other things like that. Long before the Ten Commandments. Long before the 613 uh, laws of Moses. But the, ne the next verse caught me. Look at this next verse. For Moses has had throughout many generations those who preach him. Man, that just hit me. They were preaching him. When they preached the law of Moses, they were preaching Moses. Yeah, that's who had the dog. No, they were preaching him. They were magnifying Moses. So when you preach the law, who are you magnifying? Moses. Moses. Man, I want to tell people, shut up. Oh. <laughs> Man, people out there are preaching the law, putting people under the law of Moses. They're preaching Moses. They're not preaching Jesus. Oh, well. that, that, that's how I read that. For Moses has had throughout many generations, notice it doesn't say the Messiah. No. It says Moses. Mm -hmm. It just makes you stop and think, doesn't it? That's what I go through there all the time. For Moses had had throughout many generations those who preached him in every city, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath. How many sab how many how many daily sir how many Sundays or Saturdays are people are preaching Moses instead of <coughs> they're, they're preaching Jesus, but they're preaching Jesus under the law of Moses. Here's that Romans 7 verse 4 again. Through the body of Christ, you're set free. Moses is dead. Come on. This, that, that just slapped me upside the head and I had to share that. We'll talk more about that probably next week. Man, that's like, my goodness. We were preaching. Anyway, I don't know why it got me, but it did. All right, let's go to Romans. Again, uh, <clears throat> I know most people, you know, you know there's a passage of scripture and, and we've already talked about it. We'll talk about it again just as a refresher. In Colossians chapter 2 verse 14, uh, if we started reading at 11, you'd hear a, a better dissertation of what we're talking about. But in chapter 14, it says this, having wiped out the handwriting of the requirements that was against us. See, the handwritings of the requirements does anybody, can anybody fathom what that's talking about? It's talking about the law. Now some people say, well, that's a ceremonial law. Well, in verse 17, it makes it clear. It's also talking about Sabbaths. Okay, but this is having wiped out the handwriting of the requirements that was against us. This book was not written to Jews. It was written to a Jewish group of people called the people of Rome, the Romans, the Gentiles. Now there were Jews there that knew the law. Oh, well, excuse me, this is Colossians. The Gentile people, there were Jews there. <coughs> the Jews were everywhere that knew the law, but he's talking to a Gentile group of people, having wiped out the handwritings of the requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And what, what I want to point out here is the two words against and the word contrary. In the Greek, those are military terms, and one is means one means covert and one means overt. And if you've been in the military, most people understand what a covert operation is. It's something that's done in secret that most people don't know about. Uh, it can happen uh, without, it, you know, they can send in a special group of forces and they can do what they need to do and come out and only the person they did it to knows what happened to them. You know, that's covert, it's secret, it's, 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 it's private. Overt is out in the it's overt. It's out in the open. It's, it's, it's something, you know, and when I read this, this is having wiped out the handwritings of the requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it, what is it, the handwritings of the requirements that was against us, out of the way, and when and how did he do that? Having nailed it, what the handwritings of the requirements, to the cross. So at the cross, remember, everything has to go through the cross. Everything on the left side of the cross has to go through 
the cross, the blood touches everything. And it's taken out of our way. It, but now see, the overt, most people that I talk, oh, I'm, I know I'm not under the law. You know, I'm not, but the, it's the covert that I don't think we really recognize. The law that's still in our heart. So, see, some of us, some of us think that we're not worthy of God's goodness because of what we've done in the past. Some of us are holding things that we've done in our past against ourselves, keeping us from being willing to receive the goodness of God. So the law is what? It's still working covertly, keeping you from being free. This whole, this whole series we've been doing is taking the chains off of liberty. And in our hearts, I believe with all my heart that many of us have given up opportunity, quit, quit chasing certain dreams and visions that we've had because we feel like we've screwed up too much, that we've ruined it, we've missed our opportunity. Tell that to Samson. Tell that to Samson who in his last day, his last breath of life, killed, fulfilled the will of God more in his life in his last breath than in his entire life previously. Did more to fulfill the will of God in his life. Being blind and chained between two pillars. Killed more Philistines. Delivered his people. Yeah, to tell that to other people in the, in the world where, you know, that... Tell that to King David, who, who was a murderer, adulterous and a murderer. You know, t tell that to Abraham, who screwed up and had uh, Ishmael. You know, it, it's, it's you know, we, we think what we've done keeps us, and, and that's a result of the law working overtly. I, I, there's so many people that satisfy are satisfied just with I don't want to say what they have because having is not the issue it's not in having and having not it's being all you can be in Christ Do you understand the difference it's not about our possessions it's not about you know how big your house is and it's are you the apostle Paul said it this way he's, he, he, he runs the race set before him he, he pursues the life he now lives in the flesh he lives by the faith of the son of God he, he, he reaches out for everything that is Jesus did freely for him he wants to obtain it man I tell you what that, that, that's, some, that's some good living right there but you know what everything didn't go his way he got beat he got whipped. He got the, the scars of Jesus on his body. You know, he's in, he's in prison. But guess what? He was, he was pressing forward to the mark of the prize of the high calling. He wanted all that God had for him. And I tell you, that, that, that right there, and I really think it's, you know, some people, it's because of the way we, we think we were raised. I know I have a problem with that in my life. You know, we were, I was raised poor and uh, it wasn't my fault. I was just a baby, you know. <laughs> Had nothing to do with it. Just showed up one day and there I was, you know. Boop. Anyway, <laughs> and, uh, and I've had that, you know, had some educational issues in my past. Boy, has that ever held me back? Not because God did. Guess who did it? I did. It's the way I saw myself. And still I started getting free from that. And so there really is some, some, some truth to, to the overt or the covert working. I'll jump up and tell everybody that I'm free from the law. But in my heart, am I really? And that's really what we need to... That's why Jesus came to heal. So in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, now we need to start reading really before that. Let's start at verse 20 in, in chapter 7. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. 
I, fit, I find a law that evil is present with me. The one who wills to do good, for I delight in the law of God, according to the inward man. But I see another law in my what? In my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Man, I tell you what, don't ever think that he's whining and complaining. You just got to keep reading. Because look over here in verse, uh, in chapter 8, he's talking about who will deliver me from the body of, the, the body of death. Look at verse, chapter 8 over here in verse, um, verse 23. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown, with, uh, grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. He knew very well that his body was going to get redeemed and he was going to be, his body, he was going to be delivered from this sinful body by Jesus. He knew he had a glorified body coming. That was the salvation, the gospel that he preached. That his body of sin was going to be set, he was going to be set free from his body of sin by having a, a redeemed body, a glorified body. That comes at the rapture. Yeah. So he knew, but he wasn't saying, oh, he was like, no, was he? And that leads into, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God. <laughs> man, I tell you what, the secret of getting past your flesh is thanking God. How can we miss that? It's not a woe with me. He's teaching us here how to get over the woe with me's. The way you get over the woe with me is I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord so then with my mind I myself serve the law of God but with the flesh the law of sin there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. See in the old covenant there was condemnation. When Moses was preached <laughs> in all the synagogues there was, there was condemnation. But when Christ is preached, there's no condemnation. I guess that's how it's going to fit. <laughs> there is therefore now. I like saying it. I like saying it this way. Now, therefore, there is now no condemnation. Uh, double nows. So I don't know if that's a bad thing to do. But there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. Now, I like to put in here, we've talked about this before, right there where it says Spirit, you can put Spirit of Life. Spirit with a capital letter. The Spirit of Life. Why do I say that? Because verse 2. For the law of the Spirit of Life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Let me put it this way, since we just read chapter 15 in Romans. What in 15? Where was I reading? 720. We started at 720. Roll. No, in Acts 15. Oh, Acts 15. <laughs> For the gospel of Jesus has set us free from the preaching of Moses. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Now, we've talked about this before, and I'm sure Joy's ready to put this on the board. But according to the the preaching of Moses, the law of Moses, the old covenant, there's 10 commandments and they're really not commandments, but we'll go to that since they're translated that way, we'll say them that way. The 10 commandments, 613 laws in myriads, <laughs> multitudes of what is called fence, <coughs> fence laws, that the rabbis and the Pharisees added to the 613 and 10. And they're all based under one great law called the law of sin and death. If you sin, you die. That all started in Genesis chapter 2 when God told Adam that he can eat of all the trees of the, of the garden except for one. And if he ever did eat of that, the day in which he 
ate that, he would surely what? Die. Die. And just for the Bible nerds that are out there, uh, did he die that day? Yes, he died spiritually. Did he die the day he ate physically? Well, if you understand the process in 2 Peter 3, 8, where it says one day is a thousand years, a thousand years, one day. Adam did not live <coughs> past the age of a thousand. He died within the day of the Lord, it's what it's called, before he turned into the second day. His flesh. His flesh died. We won't. That may be confusing to some, so we'll go on. 930 years. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh. And, and let me just say this. Don't, don't think about your steps. Think about your decisions. Think about the way you think. Because your decisions are based on how you think. How you think is based on what you believe. Every thought you have comes from a belief system in your heart. You don't think about something you don't believe. You believe and you think. You think, you begin to have feelings about it. Those feelings create emotions. Those emotions create bodily actions. Every action you perform in your life is based on something you thought about. Thoughts are blueprints of future actions. If you think about something long enough, you will act on it. You just will. There's lots of people who didn't mean to hit somebody until they were thinking about it. And they thought about it. Some of them got a little tipsy. And it destroyed their willpower. And now they're in jail. Because of a thought. Well, the reason they had that thought is because they had a belief system in their heart that that person was either better or worse than them or something like that. Your, your belief system will cause you to think a certain way. So when it talks, this is much deeper then the word walk it's just not about stepping therefore there are, there's no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit so there's two ways of walking one of the flesh and then one of the spirit and that's the spirit of life in Christ Jesus there's two law two, uh, it, next verse says for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from what? The law of sin and death. So it tells us right there that there was a law of sin and death that governed everything in under everything on the left side of the cross. And on the right side of the cross, we have an option now to live under the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. There's, there's uh, two commandments in the new, new covenant and there's five laws in the new covenant. And I think Joyce put them up on the screen so you can see them. And we've already talked about them, so we're not going to review those. But we need to understand that. Matter of fact, let me just show you the difference. You know, you know, in Matthew chapter, in Matthew chapter five, Jesus says something that really a lot of people, and, and don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not saying the stuff in red letters isn't important, but you need to understand. Is it left of the cross? And who was he talking to? The, the, the further, the, the earlier in the book of Matthew, the read, the further from the cross you get. The closer to, the, the further toward the end of Matthew, guess what? The closer to the cross you get. That's, is that deep thinking? <laughs> That's just the way it is. So the closer it got to Jesus being to the cross, the more he talked about the coming kingdom and the things that are going to happen after that. Watch it, watch it. In Roman, excuse me, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, do not think I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. Remember our teaching on Matthew 17? He didn't come to destroy them. He came to replace them and bring in another type of prophet. The apostle, the new covenant is based on the apostles and prophets. <clears throat> Not the law and the prophets. There's still some people in churchdom that bring the law and the prophets over into the new. And every, some people's prayer life is just like they read in the Old Testament. I hope you're not praying according to the Old Testament. 
They, they never saw God as Father. I, I hope you don't think your prayers are hindered by Satan you know, for 21 days, like a story in the Old Testament. Man, you can curl up in your father's lap and talk to him. You can approach the throne of grace boldly in the time of need. Because the body and the blood, you have free access to the Father, to the throne, to the Holy of Holies. Jesus had died on a cross and defeated hell and the devil and the principalities of powers before the cross. Now, don't use the Old Testament as how to guide your life in the present, in the New Covenant. Use the new covenant laws and principles to guide your life. Learn from the Old Testament, but don't. Uh, I mean, right there. Some I know. I've heard it for years. Well, we got to. I, I don't want to mimic them. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's so many things in Scripture that you just. I, I should, I, this is not a thing on prayer. I, I don't know where it's at right now. I wasn't even going to talk about it. But there's a story in there about, about a, a person that comes knocking at your door late at night. And he, he wants some bread. And and you don't answer the door. Or not you. But your neighbor doesn't answer the door. The neighbor doesn't answer the door. He keeps knocking and begging. You know, and, 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 and finally, finally, the guy gets out of bed. And goes down there and helps him. You know what I'm saying? You know how many times I've heard people preach that? <laughs> is that the way God is? Just keep on. Just keep on asking God. You just, you don't have your, you just keep on knocking. You just keep begging God. You just keep, you bother God enough. And he'll finally answer your prayer. He'll come. Stop. I've heard that preached. You've heard it preached. Oh my gosh. Read it. the next line in that verse says, says, who has a friend like this? We definitely don't have a God like that. You don't have a friend. Who would have a you wouldn't have a friend like that? That's not your friend. That's the point. It's not saying this is the way God is. <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm meddling. When I hear stuff, I just get stuck. Yeah, I don't have a sign. Verse 17, that's a rabbit trail. Verse 17, do not think I have come to destroy the law and the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to what? Fulfill. Well, guess when this was fulfilled? It was fulfilled at Calvary. Matthew 17, it was fulfilled in the, in the spirit in the heavens. <clears throat> For surely I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass away. From the law till all is what? It's fulfilled. Fulfilled. Well, Jesus came to fulfill God's will. He did it at Calvary. But guess what? The next verse goes right along with Romans chapter 8, 2. The next verse says, Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of the commandments and teaches men, so shall, uh, uh, teaches men so, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them <coughs> shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. We need, and then it goes on and says, for I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the what? Scribes. Right. Scribes and Pharisees. When was that a level of righteousness for a believer? Come on, church. Keep it in context. When was having righteousness to the level of a scribe and a Pharisee the level of righteousness that God wants for us in our life? Before the cross. That was before the cross. Thank you, Bob. The law. Excuse me, I'm missing a verse. I think that's in Romans. 
Romans chapter 5. No, Romans chapter 6. Verse 23, Joy. Huh. I don't know where to start. Verse 20. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regards to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now having been set free, say set free, set free from sin. Wow. And having become slaves to God, you have fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is what? Death. And sin existed under the law of sin and death. Do you understand that? For the wages of sin, what was the, the, in Romans 2? The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. For the wages of sin is death. Do you see that? Same thing. But the gift of God is eternal life. Guess what? If you don't choose the gift of God, you're still under the law of sin and death. That's why one jot and one tittle is not going to go away. It's not going to go away. But it's, your, it's our choice to choose the new covenant or still live under some form <coughs> fashion of the old covenant. Because the wages of sin is death. If you still choose your righteousness over Christ's righteousness, if you still choose the righteousness of a Pharisee or a scribe, if you still think it's about your performance instead of his, your wages are death. For the wages of sin is what? Death. Yeah. But the gift of God is eternal life. This is talking about the new covenant work of Jesus Christ. Look over at Romans chapter 8 again. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law mm -hmm. could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. See, the law was all based on the flesh. But the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is based on the what? Spirit, not the flesh. There are some people that still are born again, spirit filled, but they're still basing their walk on the flesh and not the spirit. God sees us according to the spirit. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the what? The spirit. the spirit. And I still believe there's so many of us that judge ourselves and keep us from the, the promises of God. All right, how much time do we have? For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. Hear that? Remember what you think about, you're going to perform. If all you do is think about the world, guess what you're going to perform? The world. What are, you, what are we setting our minds on? Love, joy, peace, patience. Now, is that in faith? Are you saying that in faith? <laughs> wow. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds... Things on the things of the flesh. Of the flesh. Yep. But those who live according to the Spirit <clears throat> set their minds on the things of the Spirit. What you think about, you'll perform.
or to be carnally minded. I love this word carnal. You really want to know what the Greek word for carnal means? Flesh. It means flesh. Go deeper, Jerry. What's flesh? Blood and bone. Say meat. Meat. Okay. Wait a minute, let me read this. So to be a meathead. <laughs> Yeah, to be a carnally minded person. To be a meathead. It actually means to be moved by your five senses. Touch, taste, smell, sight, and hearing. If you're always being moved, if your emotions are always being moved by what you touch, what you taste, what you see, what you hear, touch, taste, smell, sight, and hearing. If... You know, there, there's people that walk into a church and they'll sit in a service and they'll walk out and go, well, God wasn't there today. And you ask them, I said, well, you know, they, they, didn't, they didn't see it. or in, in their opinion, they didn't see it. But someone else could walk in and go, oh, man, it's the greatest service they've ever heard. And they made a judgment that God wasn't there because what they didn't see, feel, or hear. Well, God's everywhere. Does everybody understand that? I mean, oh, yeah. we, we really have some... People have been saved a long time that are still meatheads. <coughs> Did I say that out loud? Dang it. <laughs> For the carnally minded is what? It's death. You'll, you, in, in the midst of you thinking you're being successful, you're bringing death to your life. But to be spiritually minded is life and what? Peace. I tell, I tell you right there, it's such a powerful thing. Uh, I'll read verse 7, go, going back to verse 6. But... Because the carnal minded is enmity against God. You, if you try to make a godly decision while you've been thinking in the flesh, then it's not going to happen. That's why I like Psalms 34. Psalms 34 says, I'll, it says, uh, it says uh, how's it start? I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'll bless the Lord at all times. As praise shall, uh, I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make uh, its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord. He spent time magnifying the Lord before to verse 4. He was magnifying God to the point where humble people were hearing it. I mean, let us exalt his name together. Look at verse 4. I sought the Lord and he heard me. Man, that's, when did he see God? After he magnified him. Most people can't find God in their life because they're not magnifying Him. He's there. Not looking for Him either. But you're just magnifying the, the situation bigger than the God. Let's go back to verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and what? Peace. In all my counseling, I tell the, the people that I believe that can actually use it or do something with it or actually apply it in their life. You know, there's a lot of people you give counseling to, they won't. <laughs> You're just wasting your time. They're not going to take it. But the number one thing I tell people in any decision you're in is pursue peace. Pursue peace. Don't pursue the biggest paycheck. Don't pursue the biggest. Pursue peace. Not the biggest title. Pursue peace. Peace doesn't mean an absence of conflict. Uh, Paul was pursuing peace and he was at peace, but he had lots of conflict. He had lots of things going on, but he was, peace is on the inside. You know, uh, like happiness. Happiness is a circumstantial thing. You know, it's circumstantial, but joy is something on the inside. It's not moved by circumstances. You can be happy one day, not happy the next day, but you can still be joyful on the inside no matter what. Joy is on it. Peace is on the inside. You know, it's it's a. I, I tell people. I just I was talking to some people not too long ago, and I just told them pursue peace. I didn't tell them what to do. I'll never do that. I tell them to pursue peace. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is what righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Activate the Holy Ghost in your life. <coughs> pursue peace. Make sure everything you're doing is right in right standing with the Father. 
And whatever decision you make, it will go well with you. It may not be the biggest paycheck, the best title, the prettiest car. I some, there's some pretty vehicles out there, some brand new vehicles. Man, you may think it, you may, it makes you happy for a while until you get your oh, third or fourth, fifth payment in the mail. Then you're not so happy because it's not a new car anymore. As soon as, you, as soon as you drove it, went to McDonald's and spilled Coke in there, it's not new anymore. And you're still paying new car prices on an old used car. And you're not happy no more. See, bigger and better doesn't mean it's God. Pursue peace. Pursue peace. People say all the time, debt-free living is the way. No, no, no. No, it says we, we, we should be lenders. We shouldn't be in debt, but we should be in a position that we can, we can use debt. Don't let debt use us. We, need, we can use debt. Man, when money's cheap, use it to expand. Be wise. Never make, never make an interest payment. I mean, uh, pay, it, pay it off. Be wise. Be at peace. Verse 7, because the carnal minded is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. And if your mind is messed up, if you're a meathead, then you're trying to figure out what God wants you to do. No wonder the scripture says a double-minded man is what? Wow. Unstable in all his ways. That, that, that doesn't mean... <laughs> A double-minded man. Well, 50% of my decisions are godly and 50% are uh, No, that's not what it says. It says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. It's not a 50-50. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Man. But you are not in the flesh. Listen to that. But you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, hear that? Here you go. If Christ is what? In, in you. you. He's not up in heaven. He's <coughs> in you. Hopefully. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of what? Righteousness. Righteousness. You're in right standing with the Father, not because of your performance. Because if the Spirit of God is inside of you, your flesh is dead. It's not your performance. Even your good part of your flesh is dead. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But if the Spirit is life, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give you life to your what? Mortal body. Now what are we talking about there? Romans chapter 8 verse 23. Not only that, but we also have the first fruits of the spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. That's coming up. He's just getting to it. Through his spirit who dwells in you. Man, <coughs> we need to start. Uh, we're going to go ahead and. Oh my goodness. I didn't want to get into next week's. We've gone 15 minutes over before. Mm hmm. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity you give us to gather together in this your place. Holy Spirit, you're the great teacher. May we understand that we're free. May we take the chains off of the liberty in which you have made us free. May we stand fast in the liberty. May we walk in peace and faith grace and love may our mind be focused on the spirit may we see people as you see them may we see ourselves as you see us
May we think the way we're supposed to think. Holy Spirit, be your guide, be your comforter. All God's people said, Amen. 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 The one slide you had up there were Ten Commandments, 573 ceremonial laws. 613. 613 what? Laws. Laws. Just plain laws. Sir, they're all ceremonial laws. Ceremonial. No, they're, they're more than ceremonial laws, but. It's up there, Jerry. Okay. Civil common people, civil law. Yeah, then it breaks down. The, 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 the rest, most of them were for the, the temple use. Sure. So the common person didn't have to know 613 laws. Mankind perverted that. Well, somebody should write a book called Perverts of the Church. Uh -huh, huh. That's a great title. Yeah, I think it would be a number one seller. I'd buy it, just for the just for the title. Yeah. The problem is people open up to their pastor's names in it. Yeah. I mean, I've been taught that all this time. Man, was I stupid. <laughs> Thank you for joining Pastor Curtis and Joy for this message. If you would like to hear more from Pastor Curtis or Joy, please check them out on their Coker Ministries YouTube channel. Also, please like and subscribe if these messages are a blessing to you. You can also visit their webpage at cokerministries.com. God bless you. Have a great day. This ministry functions on the support of our listeners. We appreciate your prayers and your financial blessings. Your support helps us to continue to share the message of grace, peace, Christ's righteousness, and the finished work of the cross. You can give online or digitally at the Cash app. The name is Coker Ministry or Joy Coker. Also at Venmo at Joy-Coker. Or you could mail your support or prayer request to Coker Ministries, 15239 555th Avenue, Parkers Prairie, Minnesota, 56361. We pray God's blessings over you. Remember, if you are in Christ, you are blessed, highly favored, and so very deeply loved. Again, thank you for joining us in the Word. Be blessed.